we're asked to solve 2x is equal to the principal square root of 14 plus 10x plus 2. So whenever you see one of these equations that have a variable we need to solve for under the radical sign, what you want to do is you want to isolate the radical sign and then square both sides, essentially, to get rid of it. But you have to be very careful when you do that, because when you square a radical sign, you actually lose the information that you were taking the principal or the positive square root. And so when you get your final answers, you've got to make sure that they work, because some of the answers might have been based on taking the negative square root. And just to make sure, I guess the best way to, to see that tangibly is to try to do this problem. And let's see if that shows up here. So the first thing we want to do is isolate this radical sign. Best way to do that is to get rid of this 2 here. The best way to do that is to subtract 2 from the right. But if we do it from the right, we also have to do it from the left. And so our equation becomes, on the left-hand side, we have 2x minus 2. And then on the right-hand side, that is equal to the square root of 14 plus 10x. And these guys right over there cancel out. And so now we can square both sides. So now we can square both sides of this equation. And this is the step where we're losing information. Because when we square the right-hand side right over here, when we square the right-hand side, and this is the whole point of squaring it, we're just going to get 14. We're going to get 14 plus 10x. And the reason why we lost information is this we would have also gotten this if this was the negative square root. But if this was the negative square root, this would have been a fundamentally different problem. You would have had a negative square root out here. But we're getting the same thing over here. So one of our answers might actually satisfy this equation as opposed to the one that we need to solve, which is the one that doesn't have the negative over there. So the best way to do it is just to so square, solve, and then see which of these work and which of them don't by substituting back in the original equation. So we get 14 plus 10x on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, and we've done this many times in previous videos, if you square something, if you have a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. You can do the distributive property twice, literally expanding this out and multiplying, or you could do FOIL if you like that better. But it is good to recognize the special case of squaring a binomial. It fits this pattern. So 2x squared, the whole quantity, is going to be 4x squared. So if you take 2x and I square the whole thing, I get 4 x squared. And then I'm going to take the product of both of these terms. So 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. Negative 4x times 2 is negative, negative 8x. Let me be clear how I'm getting these. So this is this term right here is 2x squared. This term over here, this term over here is 2 times 2x times negative 2. So it's equivalent to this term right over here. And then finally, I'm going to have to square this right over here. So negative 2 squared is just positive 4. So this is analogous to this term right over there. And now we have a quadratic equation. And we can simplify it so it looks like a traditional quadratic equation. So what we can do is get rid of this 14 plus 10x on the right-hand side. Once again, best way to do that, subtract 14 from both sides, subtract 14 from both sides, and subtract 10x from both sides and subtract 10x from both sides. And we are left with the right-hand side is easy. 14 minus 14 is 0. 10x minus 10x is 0. We're just left with a 0. On the left-hand side, we have 4x squared. Negative 8x minus 10x is negative 18x. And then 4 minus 14. 4 minus 14 is negative 10. And that is going to be equal to 0. And everything here is divisible by 2. And so what we can do is just to simplify this a little bit is multiply both sides of this equation is multiply both sides of this equation by 1 half. So let's multiply both, which is the same thing as dividing it by 2. Mul dividing both sides by 2 or multiplying both sides by 1 half. And what that does on the left-hand side, 1 half times 4 is 2 x squared, or 1 half times 4 x squared is 2 x squared. 1 half times negative 18 x is negative 9 x. And then 1 half times negative 10 is negative 5. And on the right-hand side, we have this is equal to 0. And so we can let's see if we can factor this out. We can try factoring by grouping. And when you factor by grouping, we're looking for two numbers. So we're looking for two numbers, a, let's call them a and b, that add up to negative 9, because we're going to break up this term right here into ax and bx. So they need to add up to negative 9. And their product needs to be the product of 2 times negative 5. So a times b 
needs to be equal to 2 times 2 times negative 5 or negative 10. And since their product is a negative number, one of these has to be positive and one of these has to be negative. And we've covered this in we've we've shown why this works in, in I think many, many, many videos ago, but you might want to look that up if if you think I'm doing some type of magic voodoo right over here. So let's think about numbers that, that add up to negative nine and that, whose product is negative ten. So if you look at one and ten, if you make one of these negative and one of these positive, you will either get positive or negative nine. And so that looks pretty good. So if you have one and negative ten, they add up to negative nine and you take their product, you get when you take their product, you get negative 10. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. So let's break up this negative 9x into, let's break it up into a positive 1x and a negative and a negative 10x. So all I did, obviously 1x minus 10x is negative 9x. And that's why you see why they have these coefficients have to add up to negative 9. And then we have the 2x squared out here, and then we have a minus 5 out here. And you should just see this negative 9x is the same thing as I wrote in green right over here. And if you don't like this factoring by grouping, the other option really is to use the quadratic formula, and you'll just get the answers. But this is a little bit cleaner, especially if you have a gut feeling, and the people who have written this problem seem to like to give us integer solutions, or close to integer solutions. So if you have a gut feeling it's going to be one of those, factoring by grouping is not a bad idea. And so we group. We can group these two guys, and then we can group and then we can group these two guys. So we could call this plus negative 10x so that we can group it just like that. And so in this first expression right here, we can factor out an x. So this becomes x times 2x plus 1. That's this right over here. And in the second term over here, we can factor out, looks like we can factor out a negative 5. So you factor out a negative 5, you get negative 5. Negative 10x divided by negative 5 is 2x. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is just 1. And now we can factor out a 2x plus 1 from both of these terms. And so I'll do that over here. So if you factor out a 2x plus 1, you get 2x plus 1 times, you have this x over here, and then you have this minus 5 over here. And if this isn't clear what I did here, I just literally factored these guys out. Or another way to think is if you multiply, if you distributed this times that, and if you, if you multiply 2x, time, 2x plus 1 times x and 2x plus 1 times negative 5, this is exactly what you would get right over here. So another way of thinking of this factoring this out is that we undistributed it, I guess is one way to think about it. But anyway, this equation is now 2x plus 1 times x minus 5 is equal to 0. And obviously, if you have the product of two numbers and they equal to 0, that means one or both of them need to be equal to 0. So we get either 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, or, or I guess it could be and or, x minus 5 is equal to 0. When you solve this, you get you can subtract 1 from both sides. You get 2x is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by 2. You get x is equal to negative 1 half. Or x, x is, actually it's not and or, it's just or. Either one of these will satisfy. If either one of these are equal to 0, then this will satisfy the equation, although both of them can be. And so, and then or satisfies that obviously. So if and then for here, x minus five equals zero. Add five to both sides, you get x. I'll write it down here. You get x is equal to five, or x is equal to five. Now remember, you can't just say that these are the solutions because one of these solutions might be for the case where this was the negative square root. So we have to substitute back into our original equation and see if they work. So first, let's try the situation with x is equal to negative one half. If you do that, you get. I'll do it up here. Uh, I'm running out of real estate. I'll do it up here. So let's try the situation when x is equal to negative 1 half. Then this equation becomes 2 times negative 1 half is equal to the principal square root, the principal square root, the principal square root of 14 plus 10 times negative 1 half, 10 times negative 1 half plus 2. And so we get negative 1 is equal to 10 times negative 1 half is negative 5. 14 times negative 5, 14 times, oh, sorry, 14 plus negative 5 is 9. And the principal square root of 9 is 3. So we get 3 plus 2, which is clearly not the case. This does not work. Negative 1 half does not work. 
This is an extraneous solution. And you're like, wait, why did that even show up when we did the math? Because if you think about it, if this was the negative square root, if this equation happened to be have a negative square root over here, then this would be a negative 3, and then it would work. And then it would work. So this was the solution for when we were taking the negative square root. But this is the principal square root. And so negative 1 half does not work. So let's try x is equal to 5. I'll do it right over here. So if x is equal to 5, then we get 2 times 5, so that's 10, should be equal to the principal square root of 14 plus 10 times 5. Well, 10 times 5 is 50, plus 14 is 64, plus 2. This is clearly true. The principal square root of 64 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. So our answer for this radical equation is x is equal to 5. It is not x equals to negative 1 half. This is extraneous.